Yes, uh, my dear children, you are welcome to another lesson, SST, uh, SST lesson. Uh, previously, we looked at, uh, in the lesson 16, we looked at the Batembuzi, that's Bunyoro Chitara Empire under the Batembuzi and the Bachwezi. And we say the Batembuzi were the founders of Bunyoro Chitara Empire. The Batembuzi were the founders of Bunyoro Chitara Empire. Their first leader was called Ruhanga, and their last leader was called Saza. We said they were, succeeded, they were always called demigods, and then they were succeeded by the Bachwezi. The Bachwezi took over from the Batembuzi. The Bachwezi established a ruling dynasty called the Chwezi dynasty. And their headquarters was at a place called Bigo Biamugeni. Bigo Biamugeni. So that is where the headquarters of the Bachwezi were. And Bachwezi are remembered for so many things. And that's why I want to look at today's lesson. Today's lesson, which is lesson number 17, we want to look at the Bachwezi. But under the Bachwezi, we're going to look at the good things about the Bachwezi. Why do we remember the Bachwezi? What good things they do in Uganda? Hmm? So those are contributions of the Bachwezi in Uganda. Contributions of the Bachwezi in Uganda. Now, the Bachwezi, we are going to character, we are going to group them, their contributions into three. Number one, social contribution, political contribution, and economic contributions. So this time, let's start with the social contributions, the good things brought about by the Bachwezi. Social contribution. Social means the way we live amongst ourselves. Why do we remember the Bachwezi? Number one, the Bachwezi introduced some indoor games, such as Omweso introduce some indoor games such as Omweso. We're going to look at it in the next slide. The Bachwezi also introduced the knowledge of building grass thatched houses. They introduced the knowledge of building grass thatched houses. For those in the villages, you know grass thatched house. Which people brought that knowledge? The Bachwezi. Then also, the Bachwezi introduced the idea of digging ditches around the homestead to provide water for their animals. They could dig ditches around their houses so that when it rains, water will collect in those ditches and the animals will have enough to drink. Those were social contributions of the Bachwez. I say they introduced Omweso. In the picture there we say Omweso. That is Omweso. Eh? Yes, local chess. Then let's continue look at that is a grass thatched house they introduced the idea of building grass thatched houses that's a grass thatched house so those are social contributions of the choice economic contributions why do you remember the choice economically economics meaning things they introduced that earn us money things that ever choose introduced and they earn us money my dear children what are those contributions of the choice economically number one the Bachwezi introduced iron smelting. The Bachwezi introduced iron smelting. This is making of items, tools, out of iron, out of metals. For example, the pangas, uh, the spears, the holes, making those items. That process is called iron smelting. And the person who makes that work, who makes those items, is a blacksmith. A black. So they introduced the knowledge of making pangas, Spears, holes from iron, they are called the Bachwezi. They are called the Bachwezi. The Bachwezi introduced the idea of backcloth making, backcloth making. All these things earn money. When you make tools out of iron, you sell and get money. When you make backcloth, you sell and get money. So those are called economic contributions, economic contributions. They introduced the idea of backcloth making. The Bachwezi started salt mining in Lake Katwe. They started salt mining in Lake Katwe. What else do you remember about the Bachwezi? Economically, they introduced coffee cultivation. They introduced coffee cultivation, the growing of coffee. Yes, you grow coffee and sell. Today people have a lot of coffee. There is the one that introduced by the Bachwezi. There is the one introduced by the Bazungu, the missionaries. But all these are called economic contributions of the Bachwezi. 
What else we remember the Vachois for? They introduced longhorn cattle. Longhorn cattle. These are cows with long horns. With long horns. You can sell the cattle and get money. That's economic. Why do we remember that? Vachois economically, they introduced cowhide sandals. Cowhide sandals. These sandals you make, sell, and get money. Those are called the economic contributions of the Bachwezi. Ah, in the picture there, we see long horned cattle, like the Ankole cows. Those are long horned cattle. They were introduced in Uganda by which group of people? The Bachwezi. Uh -huh. What else? We have cowhide sandals. Those are sandals, and different. these are different types of sandals. That idea of making those sandals from the cowhide, from the skin, was introduced by the Bachwez. And people make and sell and get money. Uh -huh. Back cloth, that's the back cloth. Eh? In the pictures, you see the first picture they are making. You know, back cloth is got from a tree. Now they are moving the skin of the tree. The other one, they have displayed it it's very wide now. The other one, they have made a cloth. Eh? You can see those people putting on back cloth. So you make and sell. Mm -hmm. Those are contributions of that. What else? Political contributions. When we talk of political, we mean the way uh, it's about leadership, how people govern themselves, how people rule themselves, how people govern themselves. So politically, the Bachoise introduced a centralized system of government. Centralized system of government. That's a centralized monarchy system. In short, in brief, in a simple term, the Bachoise introduced kingdoms in Uganda. They introduced kingdoms in Uganda. That's centralized monarchy system. They introduced kingdoms in Uganda. They Bachoise also introduced royal regalia. In the other lessons, I told you about royal regalia. I even showed you the examples of royal regalia, such as the royal crown, the royal throne, the royal spears. Those things, I think you saw them, and I saw, gave you the pictures. They introduced royal regalia. They also introduced the art of building, uh, building reed palaces. A palace, the, the, that is the head court of the king, where the king stays. Today, they have modernized ones, palaces built by bricks, but the others are built using reeds. You're going to look at a reed palace. Which people introduced the idea of building reed palaces? The bar trees. Look at that one. They are building a reed palace. They are joining many reeds, and now they will come up with a, with a grass thatched house down. That's the reed palace. Hmm? Which people introduced that skill? The Bachwezi. Royal regalia, I gave them to you. The collapse of the Bachwezi, or the Chwezi dynasty. What made the Bachwezi to run away from Bunyoro? What made them to decline? There are some factors. The Bachwezi are very strong. But at a certain time, they declined and became weak. What brought the weakness of the Bachwezi? Who had established themselves? They are very strong. Eh? You know, like Goliath was once strong, but at one time when David came and kicked him off, ah, that marked the downfall of Goliath. Eh? We had people like Ida Min Dada, they were very strong. Eh? They could shake Uganda. But where are they? They are nowhere. What, what are those factors that led to the collapse of the Chase Dynas, one, the coming of the Luo speakers. The coming of the Luo speakers. When the Luo people came to Bunyoro, they chased away the Bachwez. And the Bachwez ran away. That was the main reason for the collapse of the Bachwez. Main reason in the Luo invasion or the coming of the Luo speakers. Another factor that made, uh, that led to the collapse of the Luo, or of, of the Chase dynasty, is the outbreak of human and animal diseases outbreak of human and animal diseases. Now, when this people experience many diseases and, and animal diseases, human diseases, say that there are misfortunes in our empire. Let's leave this place. Especially when they saw their beloved cow dying. That was Bihogo. Their beloved cow was called Bihogo. When it was attacked by a disease and it died, they said, oh, even as we are going to die from here, they had to run and disappear because of the death of their beloved Cow. So outbreak of human and animal diseases led to the collapse of the Bachwezi. Again, we can say the empire was too large to be ruled by one king. King Wamala is the last king. It was too large. 
that one king ruling it was not easy. So it brought a lot of challenges in Swan. It's too big for me and ah, then they, there was a collapse. Civil wars, or politic, that's a political reason. Uh, constant civil wars, constant civil wars, wars amongst themselves. Then outbreak of drought and famine that made uh, the empire to collapse. There was a drought and famine. When their foods dried, they said, now we cannot stay here, let's run away. Then you have this unit among the Bachwezi, lack of unity. They were not working together. They were divided. Others want to be kings, others not to uh, this and this, fighting each other. They said, ah, let's leave. So they disappeared. But the main reason was the coming of the rural speakers. Question, how did the size of Bunyoro Chitara Empire contribute to its collapse? How did the size of Bunyoro Chitara Empire contribute to its collapse? How did the size, you talk about the size. Shall say, Bunyoro Chitara Empire was too big, was too large to be ably ruled by a king. To be ruled by a king. It was too big to be ruled by a king. That is the size. Mm -hmm. Bunyoro Chitara Empire was too big to be ruled by a single king. Question, how did iron smelting strengthen the Trezi Empire? We said these were making tools out of iron, weapons, eh? weapons like spears for defense, shields. So how did those items made of iron make the kingdom strong? Eh? So how did iron smelting strengthen the Trezi Empire? So the answer is better strong iron weapons were made to fight against enemies. Because of iron smelting, these people made strong weapons to fight against their enemies. Strong, strong weapons were made to fight against their enemies. Then iron smelting increased on food production since they could make hose and people could cultivate so there was enough food and people were very okay. Eh? So those were the Bachwezi. They are remembered. They are very good. They did good things. So I will accompany it with an activity. I'm going to say an activity in your notes. And the answers are going to come from what we have discussed. This marks the end of our lesson. Thank you for being good children. Coming next, we shall be looking at Bunyoro Kingdom. Bunyoro Kingdom. This one has been Bunyoro Chitara Empire under the Bachwezi. This time we shall look at Bunyoro Kingdom. Okay? Bunyoro Kingdom. May the Almighty God bless you. Thank you for being children. I love you so much. We miss you. I know you are taking care of yourselves and everything's moving on very well. Take care, revise, and pray for our nation so that COVID can end, so that we meet once again. Otherwise, God is in control. He's taking care of He's also taking care of you and pray for one another. Bye-bye. Love you so much. Bye-bye, my beloved.